This is the Reflections Tutorial. When discussing reflections in geometry, one of the things that we're discussing is isometry. Isometry is a type of transformation that does not change the size or shape of a figure. Now, when we create a isometric figure, we refer to the new figure as the isomer of the original figure. And in geometry, there's a couple different types of reflections that we typically deal with. The first is a reflection across the y-axis. This one's pretty common, as well as a reflection across the x-axis. And also, we can reflect a figure across any line. The most common line used in geometry to reflect a figure across is the line y is equal to x, so this guy right here. Now, with each of these reflections, I've kind of described the nature of the reflection for you. Going back to that first reflection, a reflection across the y-axis, what happens to our regular x and y coordinate points of any point of that figure is that the x now becomes a negative x and the y coordinate stays the same. When dealing with a reflection across the x-axis, you'll notice that the x coordinate stays the same and the y coordinate now has a negative in front of it, so we basically just flip the sign of whatever the y coordinate is. If it was positive to begin with here, the new coordinate point is negative. If it was negative to begin with, it's a now a negative of a negative, which is a now a positive, so it's always just the opposite of what the y was originally. Lastly, when looking at a reflection across the line, y is equal to x, all we have to do in this case is take what the original coordinate point was for one of the coordinates in that figure and switch the x and y coordinates of that coordinate point. So now the y comes first, the y is the new x, and the x is now the y. And I'm going to show you an example of each of these types of reflections so you really understand the nature of each reflection. Let's go ahead and put a graph in here, and we're going to drop a figure into our graph. I'm going to drop in triangle ABC. Over here on the left, I'm going to indicate the points, the coordinate points for each of those letters, A, B, and C. So A occurs at coordinate point 3, comma 3. And B occurs at coordinate point 5, comma 6. Lastly, C occurs at the coordinate point 7, comma 3. All right, so now we have the coordinate points of each of the original points that makes up triangle ABC. Now first we want to reflect that triangle ABC across the y-axis. Now in order to reflect it across the y-axis, remember, I've got to just take what our original point was and add a negative in front of the x. So, I'm going to go ahead and write that point here. For A, the new point is going to be negative 3 comma 3. I'm only changing the x-coordinate of the point, and I'm making it the opposite of what it was. Before it was positive 3, now it's a negative 3. Same thing for b. It was 5, comma 6, now it's negative 5, comma 6. And let's do the same thing for point c. It was 7, comma 3, and now it's going to be negative 7, comma 3. And I'll go ahead and plot those points on our graph now. The first is a at negative 3, comma 3, so I'll go 3 to the left, and then 3 up, and I'll drop a point in. B was at negative 5, 6, so I'll go 5 to the left of the origin, and 6 up, and we'll drop a point right there as well. And lastly, let's take a look at C. It's negative 7, 3, so I'll go 7 to the left of the origin, and 3 up, and I'll drop a point. Now that we have those points drawn in, we can go ahead and connect them to form our triangle. Now you'll notice I've labeled this tri triangle as A prime, B prime, and C prime. That's what that little apostrophe means. In mathematics or in physics, we call that the prime sy symbol. So we have A prime, B prime, and C prime. Now that we know how to reflect something across the y-axis, let's move on to the x. And notice that we just went directly across the y-axis here and reflected our image. So this was the original image called just the image, and this now is our pre-image, 
or the isomer of the original image. All right, so in order to reflect an image across the x-axis, you'll notice that we just have to put a negative in front of the y-coordinate. So, for point A, instead of 3 comma 3, the reflection is now 3 comma negative 3. For B, we had 5 comma 6, now we have 5 comma negative 6. And for C, we had 7 comma 3, and now we have 7 comma negative 3. So now let's plot those three points. 3, negative 3, so we're going to go 3 to the right, and then 3 down, and we'll plot that point. For the new point B, we have 5, negative 6, so we're going to go 5 to the right, and 6 down, and drop a point. And lastly, for point C, we have 7, comma, negative 3, so we'll go 7 to the right, and 3 down, and we'll drop that point. Now that we have our three points, let's go ahead and connect them and form another triangle. This triangle is double prime, because I've already got prime drawn on here. So this is A double prime, B double prime, and C double prime. And remember, prime and double prime and whatever else you feel like using to label it is just your system of labeling what was the original triangle, so triangle ABC, and what's your new triangle. It could be prime, it could be double prime, I'll show you an asterisk. It's whatever you want, but prime is really easy. It's just a little, you know, a apostrophe. All right, so this was a reflection across the x-axis, and you'll notice we went just straight across the x-axis by making that change, and we created our new triangle, double prime triangle ABC. So lastly, let's go ahead and reflect that original triangle, triangle ABC, across the line y equals x. And remember, if you were to draw that line y is equal to x, it would look like this. Like this red line here, it's just a line cutting through the origin with the slope of 1. So now we're going to reflect triangle ABC across this line. In order to do that, we want to take our original xy coordinate and change it to y comma x. So for a, it was originally 3 comma 3, we're just going to switch the x and y, and it's going to remain as 3 comma 3. b was 5 comma 6, so now reflecting across the line y is equal to x, it becomes 6 comma 5. And lastly, c was 7 comma 3, so that becomes 3 comma 7. So now we just want to plot those points. Our first one, a, is 3 comma 3. It hasn't changed position, so I'm going to just drop it in right there. B is 6, 5, so we can go 6 over and 5 up and drop a point right there. And C is 3, 7, so we go 3 to the right of the origin and 7 up. Now that we have those three points, we want to connect them together to form our new triangle. So this is going to be our new triangle, and I've labeled this triangle triangle a asterisk b asterisk c asterisk or just asterisk a b c now remember we were reflecting that across this line so now you'll see it as that reflection asterisk triangle a b c it just kind of rotated about point a and flipped up to its new position so that's all there is to reflections in geometry we reflect things about the axes so across the y axis or the x axis or we choose a line and we reflect points across that line. And almost always at this level of geometry, the line that we reflect across is y is equal to x. And when we do that, we use this basic nature of reflection.